Ever since these pro-Palestine <laughs> protests broke out, I have been saying one thing consistently over and over again that Muslims have played their hand way too soon. But I think Muslims have played their hand way too soon. Because I believe Muslims have played their hand way too soon. I've been saying this for a very long time. I think Muslims have played their hand way too soon. Why have I been saying that? Because this is the only time when I have seen shocked, horrified, and scared Westerners like never before. People like us have been telling the Westerners that Islam is not like any other culture. You are witnessing a slow and painful death of the West. But people have been suffering from this pathological altruism. People have been deluded into thinking that all cultures are the same. Once we open up our borders, once we let multiculturalism flow without any regard for our own native values, all cultures behave in a similar manner. The more heterogeneous is a society, the more tolerant it is. But obviously, as some Muslims have shown us, that is not to be the case. Why every so many hundred years, the Zionists get slaughtered? Because Hitler knew how to deal with these people. I have never seen so many people moving from the left to the right in such a short span of time. And all of that has happened post October 7. The biggest example of that is Geert Wilders winning 35 seats in the recently concluded Dutch elections. Even Geert Wilders was shocked. He thought that he's only going to get 7 to 10 seats, but he ended up getting 35 seats, although it's still not enough for him to form a government. He's going to need a coalition of other parties, and I think it takes about a year or so. But fingers crossed, let's see if he can create a government. But I'm not sure whether he would be able to bring about any revolutionary changes. Kind of like what Georgia Maloney is doing. A lot of people are not happy with Georgia Maloney, but the trend of shifting towards the right has begun. And if these politicians do not live up to their expectations, I think people are going to replace them with people with even more conservative views. And if the left doesn't get its priorities right, then people who have moved from the left to the right, the only logical conclusion is that they're going to move further towards the right and end up in the far right which obviously is going to be the worst nightmare of any decent person. But don't worry, I have some good news for you. And I am sure that this is not going to be the only good news that we're going to see in the coming months and years and even decades. Hizbut Tahrir, an Islamist organization which believes in installing Sharia in every country in the world, has just been banned by the UK government. How did that happen? Why did that happen? Well, as I said, Muslims have played their hand way too soon, and even centrist governments are being forced to take action. I'm going to talk about this, but before we go further, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And like most of my videos, this video is also going to get demonetized. So please support the channel by going to patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan, or you can buy me a coffee. And you don't have to buy this one coffee, the more the merrier. Okay, it gives me more caffeine, more energy to keep bringing you videos like these. Okay, so let's get to our video. So recently, Muslim propagandists have been becoming more and more brazen. And they don't even try to hide their ill intentions towards the West. They boastfully and proudly reveal their intentions that they want Islamic Sharia rule all over the West. And the leftist politics have enabled that. They said, okay, that's all right. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, multiculturalism. All cultures are the same. So consequently, they became more and more brazen. I've been saying this for a very long time. Muslims and Islam respect only one thing, and that is power, and that is strength. And I think it's a general rule pretty much everywhere. If a bully keeps trying to bully you until he gets a bloodied nose, he wouldn't stop bullying you. And this is exactly the case with these Islamists and Dawagandists and Jihadis. We've been trying to tell the Western public for many years now that Islam is misogynist, is homophobic and is a totalitarian ideology that believes in total capitulation of local cultures and replace it with its own totalitarian form of government, i.e. Sharia. But people have not been listening. However, the way October 7th happened and the preceding 10 years had already made Muslims so brazen that they thought that they can come out and they can defend not just the suffering of Palestinian people, but also the struggles 
of Hamas. Other than Cenk Uyghur, I don't think any Muslim propagandist has actually condemned Hamas. And as a result, people who turn up in these protests, they also started favoring Hamas. That scared every decent person living in these Western countries, all the way to top officials in the government. As I said, these Islamists and jihadists respect only one thing, and that is force. That is standing up to them, looking them in their eyes and telling them enough is enough. And I think they're afraid now. So ever since the UK government decided to ban Hizbut Tahrir and designate it as a terrorist organization, some of the most prominent British Islamist propagandists have been shaking in their boots. First, they cried, oh, where's our freedom of speech? Hello, you don't believe in freedom of speech. You want to replace the current British system with Sharia, where there is no freedom of speech. Hizbut Tahrir spokesperson Uthman Badr, whom I debated with a few years ago here in Sydney, told an Australian journalist that I want to use freedom of speech to curb freedom of speech. <laughs> And the woman was like, isn't that hypocritical? He's like, no, this is your system. That is our system. So we want to replace your system with our system. And once that's done, this is what we'll do. This is how brazen they are. They say that openly. And they think that all of you guys are so stupid that you let them say that. <laughs> the argument is that you are entitled to have a robust discussion because of the very democracy that you denounce. Well, what's wrong with us, with us holding different views then, Tracy? Well, because we're not violent, we're not telling anyone to, do, to harm plank anyone. Of democracy we're saying and you, we've got different opinions. Because it's a central plank of democracy, and you denounce it. Do you not see an, an hypocrisy there? So, so let me. I want to get this straight. So, democracy says you cannot have a different view about democracy. <laughs> that would be quite ironic, Tracy. You denounce democracy and you exploit the very freedoms that democracy gives you. Do you not see that? Is that not, no. not something you will? You we, can see we are, we, are, we are being very I think I think the hypocrisy on the part is on the part of those who on the one hand say you got all these freedoms but as soon as you, as soon as you come up with a different opinion uh, they they want you to, to go back or to to, to to demonize you and to do all this fear mongering all right so anyway as I said the tide is turning now they thought that maybe they can support Hamas they can defend what Hamas did on October 7th remember this guy Abdul Wahid he appeared on Piers Morgan's show and where he was defending Hamas, where he was defending the October 7 terrorist acts, where he said that, yeah, he does want Sharia, although Piers Morgan being a brilliant journalist that he is, he actually had to get it out of him. All of these guys sometimes can be very, very slippery, but sometimes they say, you know what, fuck it, I'll just say what it is. After October the 7th, a few days later, you took part in a talk on YouTube and you said this. Brave Mujahideen, they gave the enemy a punch on the nose, mm. all right? And, and it's a very welcome punch on the nose. How can you say that's a welcome punch on the nose? I will defend the right of the Palestinians to, to resist an occupation. You think that, what happened that day was a terrorist attack? When people well, look- Do you? Do you? You know, the, the word terrorism has become so uh, uh, politicized. So that did not go down too well. And Piers Morgan is claiming victory. Piers Morgan is saying that because of his interview with this NHS doctor, the British government decided to ban his organization. But these guys are just cowards and hypocrites. Know this guy, Dili Hussein of Five Pillars? Ever since the British government decided to prescribe his Tahrir, he's been pretty busy deleting these tweets. His boyfriend, Roshan M. Saleh, he's also been deleting tweets. The jihadi publication called The Five Pillars has also been deleting tweets. And this guy, Abdul Wahid, <laughs> he went from this to this. And he's been the busiest out of all with deleting his tweets. So what happened to stand firm in justice, stand up for Allah as Quran instructs? What happened to that? Nothing. These guys are just cowards. They love their cushy lives in Britain so much that they say, you know what, screw Allah, screw Quran, screw everything. We just want to have this cushy lifestyle in Britain while people everywhere else live by Sharia. We're okay here. We want your benefits. Maybe these guys don't need it because they're probably funded by some people with deep pockets. But they want to live in the West or they see that as a strategic retreat for a bigger goal i.e. installing Sharia in the UK. But this is a common theme. 
these propagandists and these Islamists and these jihadis, they're actually cowards. I see that all the time. When these jihadis get in the faces of ordinary people, they shout Sharia, they scream in your face, they try to intimidate you and provoke you. But when the government puts its foot down, even in Muslim countries, they throw their prophet under the bus. They say, oh, please let us go. Don't, I, I, don't, I, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. I would never do that again. Never. That's what these people do. There is one thing which is a bit disappointing, but I'll still take it as a victory anyway. For the UK government to listen and take action against these people, these guys had to come out as full-blown anti-Jews and anti-Semites. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Only then the UK government decided to do something, but I don't care. As long as it happens, I'll take it. And I hope Hezbollah Tahrir is not the first and last organization. Publications like this Five Pillars, these guys are known Islamists. Yes, they haven't taken up arms, but they are provoking and they're inspiring the next generation of terrorists. Most people who are on the prevent list, the counter-terrorism watchdog, if you go through them, they would be inspired by people like the Five Pillars, or Hizbut Tahrir and other similar Islamist organizations operating in these Western countries. Not to mention, Hizbut Tahrir has been banned in Malaysia, Indonesia, Pakistan, Egypt, Bangladesh, and Germany. You'd be like, oh, Germany? Why, why Germany? Germany is one of the most bending over backwards kind of country. There is a difference. Germany is also very, very non-anti-Semite because of obvious reasons. So yes, Germany is probably one of the most overly tolerant countries. They bend over backwards to everyone and to Islamists and Muslims as well. But there's one thing that they don't compromise on and that is anti-Semitism. This is why they've been cracking down the hardest on these pro-Palestine protesters. Otherwise, usually they just look the other way. I don't have to tell you how casually Angela Merkel has destroyed the German way of life by importing thousands if not hundreds of thousands of violent migrants of fighting age so anyway that's the face of these people when you crack down on them they say you know what here's your allah here's your muhammad they throw everyone under the bus and they, please don't deport us please don't come after us please and i'm saying if you crack down just a little bit more they would say i am so loyal to the uk i love britain screw the muslim world screw everyone else i love great britain they would say that you know why? <laughs> because they don't want to live in those Sharia infested countries. They don't want to live there. They like their lives and lifestyles that they have in the UK and in these Western countries. I hope that this is not the last time when we're going to see these Islamists running for the hills. So if you like the video, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, support it on patreon.com forward slash Harris Sultan or buy me a coffee. This video is going to be demonetized. If you want me to keep producing content like this, as I said, I need your support. Until next time, ta-da. If you'd like to support my work, you can become my patron by going to patreon.com forward slash Sultan, or you can simply buy me a coffee.